Hello everyone, this is the Curly Hair Project speaking and I'm Nela. Today I will talk to you about things you shouldn't say to the female Aspie, things we've all heard and are uh, for us autistic people quite annoying. The first thing is, well, we all feel like you do and we all get overwhelmed in social situations or noisy situations. I agree. I have no doubt in my mind that neurotypical people can feel overwhelmed as well by social situations or noisy situations. The difference you have with a female with Asperger's is that the female Aspie experiences everything at a magnified level. Just think of it as looking at a patch of grass with the naked eye and then looking at a patch of grass with a looking glass. You see everything a lot more magnified. That's how we females with Asperger's syndrome function. We experience everything more intensified and more magnified. So try to remember when you say you feel, as a neurotypical person, you already feel overwhelmed by a situation or noises or sense. Try to imagine how it feels for us and try to imagine how it feels for you if you magnify that overwhelming feeling. Be respectful of it as we can be respectful of you feeling overwhelmed. The second thing that people often say to me that, you know, really gets to me is maybe if you weren't so emotional and all over the place all over the time, have you tried being more consistent? Yes, of course we've tried, but it doesn't work like that. Um, unfortunately, the female mind, the female Aspie mind can be very black and white. So it's either this or it's either that. It's all or it's nothing. And there is no in between. This may make us seem quite rigid. Another thing that we have is delayed emotional processing or DEP as we call it. Um, so something happens and due to both sensory input and emotional input we get overwhelmed so we shut either the sensory input down or the emotional input down the most logical thing to do is to shut the emotional input down by doing that we allow ourselves to deal with the sensory input and at a later date when the balance has gone 50 50 when we have a bit more energy to deal with the emotions we'll deal with the emotions so it can be that days later or even weeks later, all of a sudden we get very emotional over an event that took place two weeks ago. And everybody will be very, very, very confused about that and not understanding why we are still dealing with that. When in fact, only two weeks later, we're able to deal with these emotions. We're able to place them and to pinpoint them. The easiest way to deal with this is by validating our feelings, by letting us know it's okay to feel this way. I understand and I accept it and I hear you. And this is really, really very, very, very uh, important for anyone, whether you're neurotypical or Aspie. The third thing um, that people often tell us that's not so fun to hear is maybe you just need to get out more. I often wonder what people think when they say it, like, we haven't tried it already. We hear that all our lives, like, maybe you just need to get out more. But people seem to forget that people, uh, females with Asperger's syndrome or female on the autistic spectrum, don't do that social interaction as well as other people. And for us, being social is like doing a job you can't really do. You have to learn every step and you have to memorize every step and it is so exhausting. And by it being so exhausting, our social energy tank drains a lot quicker. Um, let's say neurotypicals have their social energy tanks and let's say on an average day it will be filled up to 70%. Um, they see people on the work floor, they might see uh, friends after that for dinner um, and they will recharge their social energy tank by being around people. However, with a female with Asperger's syndrome, it's the other way around. Her social energy tank is already only at 20% at most. Um, and this is under good circumstances. So when you say you she sees people on the work floor and she sees someone after that, her social energy tank goes down instead of up. So when you say to someone with Asperger's syndrome, maybe you need to go out more, it's just incredibly draining for us. So that becomes very difficult. We have tried to be 
uh, more outgoing but it just won't work because it is so very draining on us and the circumstances to go out more need to be exactly right and that makes it very difficult be respectful of the fact that we like our alone time when neurotypical people need to be around other people to recharge their social energy tank we actually need to be alone to recharge that social energy tank and I know that sounds a bit like a paradox but it works um, another thing is can't you try harder or maybe you know challenge yourself yes we can and we do on a daily basis I think a lot of people seem to underestimate uh, effort that a lot of uh, females on the spectrum put into their daily lives um, it takes a lot for us to get up in the morning to do all those little tiny tasks in our head to make sure we get dressed we have something to eat to look proper to take the bus to work to work those are already a lot of challenges at one and when someone who is neurotypical tells us like you need to challenge yourself more it all it almost makes it seem like we're not doing enough when in fact we are already pushing ourselves the thing is when we keep pushing ourselves and we keep pushing back those boundaries um, we might end up in a burnout or a depression because we have no more time to recharge our social energy tank and we go below zero which is not good um, so keep in mind that we do challenge ourselves on a daily basis and even though it might seem to you like we're not stepping out of our comfort zones we really do step out of our comfort zones on a very regular basis even though it may seem like small steps to you it is really massive to us this is a good one maybe you should try like you know wear different clothes or you know maybe try a little makeup most female aspies are quite rigid about their clothing and very specific because we tend to like the way certain fabrics feel or how we feel in certain clothing styles we will dress to feel comfy and not to fit the part um, most of the time a lot of female aspies will not understand why certain clothing will indicate a social status or a social position like a businesswoman who is dressed in a, a skirt and with a mantelpiece and high heels uh, it might be so that the female aspie does not understand why the clothing indicates a social position in a job for example and not her personality that is why a lot of female aspies will not dress to the occasion but they dress to their personality because they feel like their personality is a lot more important than the clothing representing them you can get like two ways in this you can have the female aspie who's more the tomboy or the one who's more eccentric in her clothing I for example use clothing as a way to indicate how I feel because I cannot verbally tell people how I feel this is very difficult for me so if I dress very gothic like very black I feel very sad um, oh here's another one. Oh, Asperger's oh I know all about that I know someone with Asperger's good for you really awesome two thumbs up like I would say to my kids my foster kids um, the more you know about it the better but keep in mind that one female Aspie is not the next we're not all the same we may have some traits in common but we can even differ in traits for instance me and Alice the founder of curly hair project we have some of the same traits although we can even differ um, there are some things like she can't stand the smell of bananas I love bananas um, she will have to do routine a certain way and I will do it in an entirely different way uh, and yet we both have Asperger's it's just the same like with neurotypical people we are all individuals and we all have our own qualities and talents be aware of those um, another one can't you like just let it go for once like be human and enjoy the party no this is very difficult for us to be able to feel entirely relaxed in a situation is very very difficult and I want to illustrate this with an example my friends at school had been uh, trying to get me to have a drink with them for oh, nearly a school year now 
So I did last last week or two weeks ago. I went on a drink with them, and while they were like chatting away over their cups of tea and cups of coffee, um, having their social chit chat about you know the upcoming holidays where they would go, I was constantly worrying in my mind like what do I need to say can I say it now is it okay for me to just interrupt she's looking at me did I miss part of the conversation did I miss part of the sentence what if I don't get home in time for lunch what if I need to reorder my drink what if this what if that so I had this constant what if and why questioning in my head that kept me from really enjoying the situation like neurotypical people would. So if you put a female Aspie in any kind of social situation, it will be very hard for her to relax and, you know, let your hair down, so to speak, because she's constantly busy, uh, busy asking herself these questions and wondering about what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. Here's another one. Well, since you're so quiet, I'll just leave you alone then. This is very hard for the female Aspie to deal with. It's called passive aggressiveness, where people put secondary messages in something they're saying. So they say something, but they don't really literally mean it. Um, by saying, well, I'll just leave you alone and since you're so quiet, somebody could mean like they're being annoyed because you're not really very talkative. Uh, or they feel ignored by you, but they don't really want to say so directly. This is very confusing for the female Aspie when you have someone who is passive-aggressive or says something but means something else. We are very literal thinkers. We say what we mean and we mean what we say. And it would be extremely helpful for us if you did the same thing rather than saying, I'll just leave you alone since you're so quiet. Just say, you're awfully quiet and what I would like you to talk to me a bit more. So we know what you're expecting of us and then we don't have to worry about what you mean with what you say. Just say what you mean literally. It'll make the world a lot of a better place for everyone. Here's another one. You know, you would understand people more if you try to be a bit more empathic. Empathy is a big issue amongst females with Asperger's syndrome and a lot of us get this whole thing that we're not empathic enough and when we are empathic we often get to hear that we're pretending to be empathic the thing is that we with Asperger's syndrome can't always express the way we feel about something we are incredibly empathic but expressing that is very difficult if someone were to ask me how I felt about a certain person I would say it's the color red with yellow and it smells like clove and lavender because I think in, in colors and scents and music and I can't really verbally express what I feel and how I feel it. We have our own little ways of expressing our empathy so reading body language is very important the way we look at someone, the way we touch someone um, the way we turn our body towards someone, those are all means of empathy as well. Be aware that verbal communication is only a tiny part of communication and there is a lot more going on in a non-verbal way. Aspie females are very, very empathic. We just don't always know how to express it. Best one of all. But you look so normal! Well, you know, I didn't know there was a dress code to Asperger's syndrome. Must have missed that when I got the Aspie invitation to the Aspie party. We don't act a certain way. We don't look a certain way. We don't have Asperger's syndrome written on our forehead. Um, we just have our quirks. We have our routines. We have our habits just like anyone else. And yes, we think differently. We think outside of the box. And that makes us so valuable in this society. It's not a disability as I see it. It's, it's just we're different. We just think differently and maybe it's a bit harder for us to function in a society that is very social and very outgoing when we are in fact very introvert and, and, and very inside our heads. But that doesn't make us any better or worse. It, it just makes us us and most of female Aspies have a very strong shape-shifting ability so we are able to adapt to a social situation for a short period of time. 
But once you get past that period of time, you will see we get very uncomfortable. Yes, we look normal because we try to fit in at such an incredible rate um, and it's very exhausting. But we do our best and it would be nice if people try to see that and would compliment on it and try to step into our world as well as we step into their world. And the last one is Asperger's syndrome. Well, you shouldn't use it as an excuse. This is one that really, really gets to me when people tell me like, you're just using it as an excuse. I'm not using it as an excuse. I'm using it because I want to understand myself and I felt different all my life and that was very difficult for me. I never could fit in anywhere. And Asperger's syndrome, that label, yes, I used the word label, helped me to understand a big part of myself and I'm still on the journey of understanding this and I'm still on the journey of learning so much about myself, but I'm not using it as an excuse. When something happens and I blurt something out. Um, let me give you an example. One of my clients had passed away, a client I worked with intensively. And uh, one of my colleagues came to me and she was looking all sad. And she said, I'm so sorry, Niela, but um, your client passed away. And my reaction was, people die. That's what they do. And she kind of was startled by my uh, cold um, reaction to it. She hadn't expected that. And she looked at me confuzzled. And I was like, I'm sorry, sometimes due to my Asperger's syndrome, I react in a way I shouldn't react. And it was okay for her. Although I've known some people to then tell me, like, you're just using it as an excuse. No, I'm not using it as an excuse. I'm using it as an explanation. Mostly to myself because I often still do things I don't always understand and I do things that make people upset and then I have to remind myself that I'm different and I think differently and by realizing I have Asperger's syndrome I allow myself to be different and I allow myself to be put in a position where I can still learn on a daily basis. So keep those steps in mind and you guys will all be amazing and fine. Thank you so much for listening, the full almost 20 minutes, and I hope you enjoyed this. Bye.